Niners! I, you know, I was, I was like done a while ago. I've been mean, ready to go. I'm watching the NBA Final Eastern Conference, right? And, uh, you know, that was pretty fun. I, I had to admit, and I've not been watching the NBA. The officials have improved since I pulled away from that league. <laughs> but Butler, poor Jimmy, he makes that three, and he gets the keys to the city. He missed it. I didn't finish. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's over, though. I mean, I'm pretty sure Celtics won that game. But anyway, let's get into football. Uh, Niners secondary tops NFL 2022, question mark. Fam, i got to tell you right now. The more I look at what we have going in that secondary, the better I'm starting to feel. Because every year I was always like everybody else. Man, can that secondary save us? No, we've, they've proven that they cannot save you. Uh, Super Bowl couldn't save you. NFCCG could not save you. Yeah, I know, Jimmy lost it, but still, the secondary played their role. And no, they could not save us. So, But now I think that could be a thing of the past. They look good. And I, and I think we should actually, we should get into that. Roll around in it. Feel good about it. You know, the, throw that ball again. Let's go play fetch. You know, I, I'm, tell, I'm really enjoying, I'm thinking about this. I'm saying, you know what? That secondary could be tough this year, considering the fact that that defensive front line attack is going to be grizzly. And also finding some substantial conversation gained, uh, to gain some idea of what is going on with, with Jason Verrett. Because uh, everybody's been wondering, how's Jason Verrett doing? How's Jason Verrett doing? So now... Uh, some conversation has surfaced. And of course, we already know big expectations are already high for newly acquired corner Chivarius Ward. And 2021, round three pick Ambry Thomas will compete for a starting spot as well. Veteran Emmanuel Mosley. Now, those, 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 those four guys alone, I'm saying, you know, this defense is going to be okay. That secondary's got coverage skills. Now, we're missing, we're, Kwaski T is not there, but then we pick up a guy named Odom, A O D U M. I don't know. I, I, I just, you know, I, I'm a well. Anyway, there's a lot of seasoned vets with high level talent in the Niners secondary this year. So could this be the year, fam, that the Niners secondary stops taking heat for another so so contribution uh, towards the defensive effort? So tonight, after going over a, a number of names and and reasons as to why there's no reason to believe the secondary will continue uh, to be the weak link, we'll pick up the phones for your take on the whole matter. Meanwhile, fam. <laughs> Jeff Wilson Jr. injury status leads the fight before the Reds Giants baseball game. Fam, do you play fantasy football? See, because when I read that, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, yeah. Because see, I, I, uh, I don't really participate in fantasy football. I don't have time. You know, like college football, I just don't have time to be doing everything. So I just play, focus on the 49ers. But fantasy football, help me understand this, right? Uh, there was a brief skirmish before Friday night's baseball game between the Reds and the Giants. <laughs> it turns out the altercation centered around a fantasy football dispute involving our very own Jeffrey Wilson Jr. News broke via the Athletic prior to the game that Reds outfielder Tommy Pham approached Giants outfielder Jock Peterson and slapped the bejesus out of him over a fantasy football argument. Am I missing something with fantasy football? Is it that intense that you'd want to slap a man? The incident led to Fam being pulled from the red starting lineup. He gets thrown out of the game behind this matter. <laughs> Peterson, after the game, explained what happened. Peterson told reporters via NBC Sports Bay Area, quote, we were in a fantasy league together. I put somebody, a player, on the injured reserve when they were listed as out and added another player. Isn't that legal? And then there was a text message in the group saying that I was cheating because I was stashing players on my bench. And then, I don't know, I looked up the rules and sent a screenshot of the rules and, and how it says that when a player is out, you're allowed to put him on the IR, and that's all I was doing. And it just so happened he had a player, 49ers running back Jeffrey Wilson Jr., who was also out, and he had him on the IR. So I said, you literally have the same thing on your bench. Unquote. And so it turns out, Pham was in two leagues, and Wilson's injury status was inconsistent between one leg and the other one he was in with Peterson. <laughs> Grown-ass men again. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's unclear exactly what rule Pham thought Peterson was breaking. 
But the ensuing discussion about it in the group chat apparently didn't satisfy Pham, so he physically smacked Peterson now clearly four months after the NFL season ends. He's still mad. <laughs> then what's the world coming to? Watch out out there. There's a lot of nutcases. I'm a baseball player, right? In Major League Baseball, and I'm, I'm getting mad months after, and I go over and smack a dude on the giant squad? What the hell? Wilson landed the center of injury, controversy during the 2021 season. It's not a big surprise, but he started the year in the pup list because of a torn meniscus he suffered early in the offseason program about this time last year, right? He missed the first nine weeks of the year and returned for the 49ers Week 10 contest against some Los Angeles silly-ass Rams. Given the injury woes in the Niners' backfield, Wilson was a popular player in a stash on the IR in real life. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. He wound up seeing a limited role when Elijah Mitchell was healthy and carried just 79 times for 294 yards and two TDs in nine games. Wilson was, was only really fantasy relevant in weeks 14 and 15 when he started versus the Falcons and Titans and posted 155 rushing yards with two TDs in those contests. To add insult to, uh, to injury for San Francisco on Friday, the Reds pulled out a 5-1 victory. Uh, they avenged a 26-23 overtime loss. Uh, their NFL counterparts in Cincinnati suffered to Wilson's 49ers in Week 14 <laughs> last season. <laughs> I, I'm, reading, I'm reading this in disbelief as I was reading it. I see what? No word from Mrs. Wilson's baby boy, Jeffrey, uh, about being the main reason of Red's Tommy Pham slapping the, uh, Jock Peterson. <laughs> there you go. I, you know, anybody, if, if you can chime in and explain to me how in the world do you get that mad? Do you get mad when you play fantasy football to that point? The next time I see him, I'm going to slap this dude. Anyway, let's get back to sanity. Jason Verrett could surprise some people this season. Especially if you're like me and was concerned about his willingness to make another comeback from yet another injury, right? JB is indeed preparing for another comeback season after tearing his ACL in week one of last season, 2021. The Niners signed Verrett to a one-year deal during the offseason, and both parties could benefit greatly from the reunion. And if he's well, you know. Oh, my God, yes. DB's coach, Corey Underland, is pumped for the return of Verrett. When healthy, Verrett has been one of the top-flight cornerbacks uh, not only in the San Francisco, in the league, period. JV all in right now and has already been a valuable contributor in the DB's room, quickly bonded with offseason free agent signing Travarius Ward, who's known as Mooney. Mooney. This means whatever he makes to play. Money, Mooney. Those are the kind of fun things you get to do, man. Uh, that's his name in the locker room. Coach Allen said about JV, quote, he's involved, he's interacting, he's talking to us as if he's going out there and playing every single down. Huge positive for me as a coach, for us as a coaching staff to have that type of leadership and knowledge, especially for the young guys and even for a guy like Mooney. Uh, he's played a lot of ball, so uh, to see that type of relationship between those two guys come together, it's really cool. It's nice, unquote. I don't know the detail how Verrett spends every moment with the group uh, when he's not rehabbing his knee. The dude is all in, fam. I hope oh, Jason can get ready between now and opening day. Fam, you got two bona fide, legit card carrying cornerbacks. Verrett, Ward. Oh, yeah. Coach added that Verrett's level of involvement, uh, you would never think that he is not already playing. JV, who was comp uh, contemplating calling it quits after his last major injury back in 2019, came back to play nearly a full season, 13 games for the 49ers in 2020. Damn good games. All of them. Coach Ellen believes at the start of the 2021 season, JV looked every bit of the shutdown corner he had seen in the past. Ellen said at that time, quote, I would say the OTA practice and the clips we got of him in OTAs and training camp, it was up there. Very, very impressive. I'm not trying to overdo it. It's incredible. Half the clips that we teach off right now in OTAs, when we are talking about what we did and you're teaching the coverages, he's on all of them. He's on all of them. You want to learn how to play cornerback? Watch number two, too. That's Jason Verrett. Verrett's four, yeah. Two. Is he two, two, or two? Two. As an example of this is how, this is how you do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited. We're all super excited. He's out there, unquote. 
Verrett rejoins a group of cornerbacks that is significantly deeper than it was in 2021, too, fam. That's the thing, you know. GM John Lynch called the club's free agency a success after signing Ward uh, just a few weeks ago. As you know, there will be healthy competition with the two veterans and Emmanuel Mosey, who's also entering his fifth uh, season with the club and can be categorized as a veteran. Ambry Thomas, D'Amador Lenore will continue to prove themselves in their sophomore seasons. The group is rounded out with veterans Dante Johnson and Darkies Denard. Kadar Hallman and rookies Tariq Castro Fields, Quantre's Knight, and Sam Womback. Fam, it's all about the leadership. I, when you look back on Richard Sherman and what he did in that secondary that wasn't that good, he made them palatable. The frontline defense was just grisly, but still, you need guys back there that can play up to a certain level to make it all work. Adding Javaris Ward in hopes of uh, improving the secondary that struggled to find consistency a season ago is something uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on this year. Be saying things, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, John, good job, baby boy. That was the dude you had to get. And don't let Amber, don't let Amber be able to play. Rams, you can talk. You're in here having fun right now. It ends. It, if Amber Thomas plays it, it's over. It's over. <laughs> it is so over. His presence on the field should help, but his presence off the field has already helped with the Niners. I'm talking about Javarius. It's always about vet leadership. In an interview with the athletic Niners secondary coach, Corey Underland said Ward is doing a doling out knowledge and helping the team's corners in the classroom during the early stages of the offseason. Coach Underland told the athletic about Ward's press coverage skills, saying, quote, you can't have. You can't have a better example of that and a better way to learn. And for him to also open up to the cornerback's room and talk about how he goes through his, his progressions, whether it's press or off coverage or any technique, that's something I, I think can help Ambry Thomas. And you know Ambry Thomas. That Oh, Ambry. And remember, Thomas had a hard time adjusting to the NFL after missing uh, the 2020 college uh, season because of COVID-19 pandemic. But he improved – Every single week toward the end of the year, he's got he's got it. He just needs to be taught it. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, a lot of it looked substantial. It was a, it, it took a, a substantial leap in 2022. Uh, if he does that, uh oh, uh oh, competition now is wide open in camp. He's got all. He's got the size. He's got the speed. Oh, he's got the speed. It's not just Thomas who the 49ers will lean on, though. Emmanuel Mosley was most likely been penciled in to start outside opposite Ward. But after that, some young corners will be in the mix. And I say, Jason Brett, let's see what he looks like by then. Don't give up on the hyena either. D'Amador Lenore will be compete for the nickel corner job. As will rookie fifth-round pick Samuel Womack. I'm really worried about that position, if anything. Um, what are you thinking about that comment? Because if anything, the corner is he uh, – if there's any one thing I'm concerned about regarding the secondary is who's going to cover that slot. Um, you know, because that's where everybody will go. Nobody, why would you deal with Verrett, Mosley, or Ward when you can just run guys through the slot? And that's where Cooper Cup made his living last year against us, right? Uh, since K1 has vacated his, his Santa Clara locker, we are now looking to fill that void. And K1 went healthy. One of the best in the league. I don't care what anybody says. And K-Wan's feeling good. Ain't nobody getting nothing on K-Wan. He's gone now. I don't think he was healthy during that NFC CG game either. Cooper Cup has never, ever in his entire career had that kind of a day against K-Wan Williams. So that's why I'm pretty sure K-Wan wasn't feeling right. Both of them, though, could stand to uh, benefit from a, a vet like Ward, who has thrived in the NFL as a press coverage corner. Classroom work will need to translate to the field on Sundays for the 49ers to be successful, but Ward's early involvement is a good sign for the Niners' most significant offseason acquisition. I know, right? Hey, what about that offensive line? I know, you know what? I, 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 uh, <laughs> I just don't like to think about the offensive line any more than we have to. We're going to have to at some point really adapt to it. <laughs> let, me, hey, let me get on this phone and see what you're talking about. Uh, uh, man, I, just knowing the secondary is not going to be trash this year has already got me excited. Uh, and I, hey, Nigel. Rombo. <laughs> 
exactly what you're doing. Talk Am to I the first one on? Oh my God, I, I didn't think I was going to be the first one on here tonight. Yeah, like like me, everybody's watching that basketball game. You know? that, game that game was the NBA East final was kind of interesting. Got tough. So now yeah. we know the Warriors are going to deal with the the Celtics, and everybody wanted that anyway. That's going to be a tough series. But Nigel. You have a secondary. Are you feeling good about the secondary? Because I'm thinking now that secondary will no longer be uh, a liability out there. I think we got something going here with that. What are you thinking? You, you know, I've, I've talked to you a whole lot in the past, Rombo, and the one thing that I've said is if the 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 in, you know the defensive line can make up for a lot of deficiencies in the mm-hmm. backfield. Mm-hmm. And especially that's going to be even more exaggerated with the um, with the linebackers. We have a really good linebacking Ooh. crew. And I think that a yes. lot of people, oh, we're not talking about this, but we have a very, very good linebacking crew right now. Considered one Green of the best Law. in the league. One of the most deepest. And, and Warner. Those oh, three guys pro. right there mm-hmm. are all all of them can make the Pro Bowl if if they play up if they stay healthy throughout the season and play to their potential. All three of them can potentially, in my opinion, make it to the Pro Bowl. So with the linebacking crew and, and us playing a four three and the defensive line, along with Charverius Ward. I think that the defensive line, or I'm sorry, the defensive backs are going to, we're going to have a hell of a defense. That's all mm-hmm. I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I can, and, and, and uh, one thing you mentioned about those linebackers, we're not signing both Alshar and Dre next year, from what I understand. So that means both correct. of them are going to be playing out of their minds trying to win that spot right. or else audition for another team. So, you know, you've got to go in there with those linebackers mm-hmm. and that secondary. I I promise you that's exactly what I was thinking, Rumbo. Is both of them are playing for a big money. They're paying. They're playing for big money mm. next season, and somebody's mm. going to sign one of those guys. Yeah. They're going to be lucky because we could potentially have three pro, pro bowlers <laughs> in the linebacking crew, and I think we're going to be surprised this year. I think we're going to be surprised because we're we're because we drafted. Um, you know, defensive line early again, and we have uh, we just have a great defensive line, in my opinion, already. We have one of the best in the league, if not the best in the league, it's across the board. Especially Drake is everything he's advertised to be. Oh, right. my yes. God. So, we have one of the best defensive lines in the league, in my opinion, already. Our defensive backs are just going to eat on that. Yeah. Like I said, Charvarius Ward, he's coming in here. He made a very good decision coming to this team for the money that he did because with the defensive line, the linebackers that we have on this team, he he should be able to do a lot. Mm. And then Hufanga in the backfield, I've already heard, even from Grant Cohn with all the drama and stuff that he's had, he's given – you know, uh, props to, to Hufanga. I yeah. mean, which I mean, yeah, it's it's crazy. I, in my opinion, I think we're going to have one of the top five. Do- and you know, knocking on wood here, I'm going to knock on wood. I think we should have top five defense, uh, one of the top five defenses in the league. I mean, and, it's and, just my opinion. And and and, and since you mentioned Hufanga, now you've got that competition going on between him and Odom. These are two of the best special teams guys yeah. that can be found, right? So now oh, what the God. 49ers did, they've yeah. actually boosted the that secondary because Odom, I understand a man never misses a tackle. He never misses a tackle. And now you've got him and Hufanga back there. I mean, it's, 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 uh, things are falling into and then, place, and, you know. And, and old faithful Ward, old faithful Ward is back there. Jimmy the bad so, guy. <laughs> you know, so you know, uh, I gotta get his jersey because he's he's always been with us. But yeah, I think we're gonna have a great defensive. Back. I think our defense as a whole is going to be great. Mm. It's gonna always, and, and even since last season, uh, honestly, since. Um, Kyle's been here. I think it's always going to be on the offense. I feel like we've always had a pretty dang good 
defense, it's always like, can the offense, can we Pull be explosive? In. Can we make points? Can we, can we go past that three and out? Can we do a little bit more? And well, that's know, what I'm going to be looking for. You, you know, believe it or not, do you know the 49ers were over 20 points average last year? So the thing is, you, you just need uh, – you can't, you can't give up the long shot. And this is what the 49ers are famous for in that secondary. We do give up the bomb. So if you cut that off, and the 49ers, I don't know if they're going to score near 30 points like their average has been, but if they get 25, that should be able to win most of those games. Rombo, we get Jason Verrett, and he comes back to 80% of what he was before. Yeah, I, I promise you right now, we make the playoffs just, mm-hmm. just strictly on defense. I I can almost guarantee that because our defensive line, our linebackers, and then with the defensive backs, I mean, you should be able to make the playoffs strictly on defense. Now, with the offense, like we just talked about, yeah, we we average quite a bit of um, points on there. I just. There's a little bit more that I want to see on the offense. I mean, Kyle's done as much as he possibly can, but I feel like we've got more weapons. We've got more mature weapons. Mm. Um, and, you know, with this trade for uh, Trey Lance, you know, we, we made it as far as the Super Bowl, NFC Championship with Jimmy G. you got to go further. I mean, you, you put all this into Trey Lance, you, you have to – you have to do something pretty spectacular. And even, you know, in his first season, I, I feel like, in my opinion, you have to do pretty something pretty crazy uh, for us to justify everything that we gave up for Trey Lance. Because, like you always say, Rombo, you know, we've made it this far with, with Jimmy Garoppolo, and it's, it's hard, you know. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, well, he was the issue and stuff. And I won't lie. I, I say that, too. Yeah. At times, I look back and I'm like, well, Jimmy Gar- well, guess what? We went to the NFC Championship. We went to the Super Bowl mm. in the past three years. That's, mm. that's that, hard to argue. And, I mean, And even Aaron Rodgers, uh, all kind of quarterbacks that are supposedly so great haven't done that well. So this is not just about that's one right. player. This is about a team. And how they sew together. This is this is my only concern about changing parts. So I'm hoping Trey doesn't cause them to lose. Just do enough Correct. to sustain just, that we can go. To go facilitate. And I have I have faith in them. I do. I, I want Give a chance, it, though. Uh, Give a chance. A player like Trey Lance. Give but chance. you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how he goes, but yeah. anyway, I know I, I went on a little ramble there, Rombo. I have one more thing to say, if you don't mind, just okay. a few more seconds here. Good. Um, ready to go, <laughs> ready to blow. You know, like, that guy sucks. Him and all the Rams fans that are in here, the hell with you all. We're coming next season. T- We're coming to whoop your asses. It's temporary. It's temporary. They'll be vacating <laughs> the premises probably after week two or three at the most. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Nigel, yeah. we'll go. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll be looking for you uh, tomorrow. Hey, yeah, I think it's Sunday. I was got right. the game. It's been a while. Game. I'll get to Mess talk to you up. again. I'll, I'll talk yeah. to you later. Okay. Have a good right. night. Yeah, have a great night, Phil. And and there's Michael on the line. Mike, come on in out of here, Chicago. Detroit, worse than everybody is here in the chat. I see. Listen up, you Detroit toilet fan. Listen up. Have the nerve to come in here and talk about the Lions, about how they are going to get the broom and sweep us. There's only going to be one thing you will be sweeping is that trophy case of the Bears and Dombert. Take a good look at the trophy case. Take a good look at it because the Lions will never – ever experience a trophy case in their entire existence. <laughs> I bomb. This, this is what I love about this program. We, we've talked about the NBA. We've talked about baseball players who've lost their minds. We're now talking about Don Burr and a trophy case. I, You know something, Michael? 
I would beg, I'm pretty sure there exists no trophy case in Detroit. That's a waste of money. Why buy a trophy case just to have spider webs and everything get all built up inside? You might as well wait until you finally land that trophy. <laughs> Which will never happen. It will never happen. You're, the Pistons are a disgrace. Your hockey team, I don't even know what your hockey team is, but they're probably the Pistons. garbage. They're probably garbage anyway. They have a hockey team. Baseball hey. is- well the, the, well, the Tigers are actually usually kind of involved. But, hey, what's the name of the hockey team in Detroit? Red Wings. I think right? it, yeah, what Red Wings. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. Red, Red. yeah, they probably <laughs> suck. Every I feel bad for every Detroit fan that, that, that lives in there. They have to watch their pathetic team suck I, every year. I mean, it's a reason to either find a way to save up enough to move out of the Detroit area or – just don't be a sports fan. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, God, I love it. Like no, no wonder why Barry Sanders and uh, do you want to know why Barry Sanders and uh, who's that other guy? I know Barry Sanders retiring and Megatron. Prime. Oh yeah, Calvin John. Yeah, yeah, yeah Megatron. Do you want to know why they retired? Because they didn't want to hear Dom Bird. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want. They didn't want to represent. Uh, they didn't want to represent a team that had a stupidness fan and that's named Don Burr. Seriously, yeah, who, but, who, who names himself Don Burr? Before, before like, what is that? Yeah, Don, what is your name really? But here's the thing, you know, Detroit's had some good players come through there. Hell, Stafford is a good player, uh, basically. Uh, he's had some players around him on occasion. But you know, Megatron's one of the greatest in in history. You know, I, I uh, there's there's something really wrong with the drinking water in that area, or something. Hey, Don Bird, how how does it how does it feel that your team made the playoffs three times with Stafford and only and were one and done at the same time? <laughs> I I know I know one of them was against the Cowboys, and the 49ers fans were begging the Lions to win against the Cowboys, but unfortunately, since the Lions uh. You know, our poverty, they didn't get to win in that situation. So pretty much, Don Burr, when are you going to learn that your team is poverty? And we're sweeping. We're sweeping you guys this year twice, twice a year. You know, that's what, what we're – that's what the Lions are known for, two free victories. There are two automatic wins on the Bears season, and that is against the Lions, confirmed. Two wins. Put them on the board. <laughs> so, let's just phone it in. There's no need of anybody getting hurt. Just phone the game in and 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 call it a day. You know, Don. You know what? If anybody gets hurt playing the Detroit Lions, it should be the Bills should be directly given to the Detroit organization. You're an uncalled for organization. You came into this time last year and you were selling wolf cookies the entire time you're in there. I didn't even know who he was, right? And he's in here and jumping on the phone. Detroit versus the world. And was, who is that? And, he, you know, and then, of course, he upset everybody in the chat. And then they proceeded to get the brains beat out. Well, they, okay, they did make a slight comeback in the fourth quarter against the 49ers. But that was due to several errors and the 49ers getting a little too relaxed out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know? Just um, imagine, like, the 49ers were literally just begging you guys to come back and you guys yeah. failed. That's all Detroit's known for. False mm-hmm. hope. False yeah. hope. You got. I mean, when they had like uh, Matt Patricia, they had like a couple Patriots uh, signing uh, to them. In, in, on paper, the, the Lions look good, but as a result, they won. They win like in twenty eighteen when they hired Matt Patricia. They got a lot of Patriots uh, players. They won six games, and then they won five games the following year yeah. and fire Matt Patricia on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Well, they were pissed off because Patricia was trying to bring in some sort of uh, uh, consistency, uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, a regimen that would discipline you into being a winning organization. And they start complaining, and it became something that was actually news. I said, <laughs> Detroit doesn't appreciate Matt Patricia because he's coming in trying to instill a winning uh, attitude. Well, I, if I'm Matt, fine. I'm out of here. You guys don't feel like winning. I'm not going to sit here and beg you to win. You don't like the Patriot way? Then screw you. I'm out of here. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hilarious. And there's also a reason why Dan Campbell say we're going to bite their kneecaps. Yeah, you, yeah, that's right, Dan Campbell. You're going to be biting 
our knees, but you're going to be biting and kissing our feet because you want to know why? Because you, that, that means you bow down to us <laughs> twice a year. Todd Burt, we're going to go, um, Mike. But Todd Burt, we got, right. everybody's got to appreciate Todd Burt. He, he, he provides comedy relief. <laughs> exactly. He's comedy relief. And before I go, the Chicago Bears lead the Lions 104 and only 75 losses. Me- meanwhile, meanwhile, mind you, the Bears have had mediocre quarterback play for the last, I don't know, since they were established. <laughs> Over the time, the Lions have had a lot of great talent, a lot of great talent, but that was never enough to beat, to lead over the Bears. I want you to remember that, Don Bird. Remember that. And always, Detroit worse than everybody. <laughs> Good night, Michael. Good night, I, everybody. <laughs> V, v I did bring up a good point, though. I had actually forgot about the Pistons when they were the bad boys. Yeah, they were Isaiah Thomas and company. That was good. Yeah. So All we got to right. get Pistons right. get in, in NBA wise. All right, Michael. You have you have a great night. Talk to you later. You too. <laughs> hey, hey, Tony. Ron Bo. Tony. I'm telling you right now, I every year we start our year by worrying about uh, either the offensive line and the secondary. Well, this year we got to worry about only the offensive line. I'm thinking, Tony, and I could be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot, I do that a lot. But, Tony, I like what I see in that secondary. What are you thinking? I think we're stacked in the secondary. Um, I think we're stacked everywhere except offensive line. Uh, as what you said, the yeah. offensive line's got to prove itself, and that's about it. We're uh, yeah. probably going to field one of the strongest teams uh, that we've ever put on the park yeah. this season. I'm just, I'm still concerned about the uh, the slot because we, we we got that that's up for competition, but the the outside. Oh, I've got no fears about the outside. I mean, the, I suppose the biggest fear on everybody's lips is McGlinchey. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what, Mike? I, I told you, every time I think about Mike, I think about those press conferences, and he coming in there with a chip on his shoulder with that look on his face like, all right, you, you SOBs, you go ahead, start. <laughs> Mike, you look pissed off before you even sit down. <laughs> Mike's, you yeah. know... You have to be gentle with him, Rombo. You know, you don't yeah, want to sensitive. hurt his feelings. He does get mad. Yeah, he's very sensitive. And sometimes I think he might, might as well put a skirt on. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. I, I just hope he's ready to go. And, you know, the injury he had was really career-threatening. And they're sounding like it's, it's not a problem. So we're going to find out. Well, it's a significant injury. And... Um, yeah, time, I suppose, time will tell, but uh, to come back from a snapped muscle, you know, whether it's a peck or, well, you know, the, the one that he got is, is um, I'd hate to find out yeah. that way, but the one, the one that he got is, um, it matters to his performance because he's got to get off the, you know, yeah, he's about to get off the explode line. Off the line. Yeah, when that ball snapped. And all that exploding might explode it again. But, yeah. Uh, Especially when you're talking about hopefully. abrupt stops. Because the offensive lineman, he just gets up, boom. He's, I mean, it's a shift. They don't, they don't, move, they, they explode left or right. And that kind of get off, man, that's really stressful on the legs. So, yeah, I guess he, well, he, the doctors are saying he's ready to go, so. Yeah, the doctors have said that uh, a lot of people have been ready to go. But uh, <laughs> he said Verrett was ready last year too, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, Woo! look what happened to that poor bloke. First game, you know, and I'm I'm sure he was absolutely gutted uh, because he was probably looking forward to the season and he's appreciative of oh. the 49ers giving him another chance at his career. 
He um, even said, don't so, pay me now. Let me prove it this year, how, what my worth is. And oh, I was, I, I, you know, you're, you're inside, Tony, you're, your feelings, you don't know what to feel. You know, you feel awful about what happened to this guy. Nobody, that shouldn't happen to anybody. And there he's laying there writhing in pain. And you know it's over. I could tell it, when he was laying there. It's over. He's out. It, yeah. It, should, it shouldn't. Look, in reality, you know, we don't wish hateful crap on any of our players, including McGlinchey, even though he's a softie. Um, but, uh, you know, as they say in the world, shit happens and you've got to deal with it. So yeah. uh, the doctors can say one thing, but uh, they can't predict how your body's going to heal. And how far along it's going to be when the season starts, and is it healed properly? Is it subjected to snapping again? I mean, the only thing I can speak from experience is a collarbone. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, had a bust, what, you know busted what? collarbone. That's pain, unbelievable pain, too, isn't it? And <sighs> uh, the surgeons basically said to me, "If you're not going to be." Uh, you know, a superstar in baseball or throwing something like that, just let it heal on its own. And oh. uh, I guarantee you, the guy said it won't snap in the same place because when the bone forms up, it, it becomes double the size as your as the normal bit. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can feel it in, in my collarbone where it's broken. It's a lot thicker than the rest of it. Yeah. The, the, but obviously um, a quad is not a fucking bloody collarbone so it's a muscle and muscles i don't know you know I'm, they've got a pretty good i mean that they've got a good um uh Tony, what do you call them medical medical team so yeah you know, oh yeah uh, when you professional they can teach that, him how to warm up that, that's not arthritic that area in the, in the collarbone or anything like that usually when they when that kind of thing heals up it it, it the body does what it cut, does but uh, there's usually with weather changes, you feel things. So, you know, it's, it's kind of scary. I've never felt it. The only thing I've felt is because it's like a little bit shorter than the other side, it pulls all the tendons in the top of your shoulder. Ah. And sometimes you get rotator cuff in, in, in the shoulder. Well, and that's... You, then you just, you've got to ice it and, and get the swelling in the tendons oh. and then it goes back to normal. That's why the doctor said if you're not going to play uh, anything where you're throwing a ball yeah. or anything, that uh, you go ahead and let that heal yeah. by itself. I always wonder what the risks are. I've heard of that kind of diagnosis before. I always wonder what the risks are. You don't want to do surgery unless the it's just religiously said. If you can avoid surgery, you do. You know, which is what Jimmy Garoppolo did, and he still ended up having some procedure anyway. But still, you know. Well, you know, when they, if they're honest with you and, and everything like that, he, the, the surgeon said to me, he said, look, there's a lot of complications with surgery. Anything can happen. You can develop yeah. an infection. You know, you can do well, this. Yeah, we have to, you know, extend it back out, put a metal plate in it, and then when it heals, cut it back open, take uh. the plate out. And I thought, no, I'm not going through that twice. Forget about mm -hmm. it. Just let it heal on its own. I'm not going to be a baseball pitcher or anything like that. Uh, that's... But injuries, but, you know, it's the thing. Being an athlete is 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 real healthy uh, if you're doing it because you know you, you're conditioning your body, keeping yourself strong. But the accidents that take place, I mean, it's just crazy. You know, but guys love playing, so they just continue to do it anyway. You know, <laughs> I mean, tell me how many sports you participated in as growing up. Well, I played, I played basketball. I'm six foot four. I okay. played basketball, I played uh, soccer, I played rugby league. But um, I was fortunate enough not to have uh, any injuries. That that collarbone injury, I actually got it in a car wreck. And oh. I wasn't even driving, I was a passenger. Oh, bad. But, oh, um, my God, it's bad luck. Yeah, so I was just unlucky. But, you know, athletes, uh, I know from uh, the rugby league players, you know, if you've had two 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 surgeries on your knee, they don't they might not feel it now while they're still young, but as soon as they get into their fifties and sixties, it starts yeah. to bother them then. You know? And the arthritis starts sets in. Oh, it's it. You know. So you know, you, you, you know you're basically you're... damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But then you've got to make a living, 
and uh, you'll sacrifice just about anything for money. I mean, money is the root of all evil in this world, you know. I mean, <laughs> look what we do for money. <laughs> but Tony, making a projection right now. I mean, give me your prolific, your most prolific guy in the secondary coming up this year. I, Chavaris Ward is an easy guess. But it's all about health. And like we're talking about health and bodies breaking down. What, I mean, how many guys are going to survive this season in that secondary? Because we're going to end up, I suspect, with three guys toward the end of the season. I think it's going to be tough, Rombo, because, um, well, we know Jason Verrett, you know, he's, I'm going to say he's injury prone and um, I, I don't wish him any bad luck. I hope he makes a full recovery, but the decisions that are made by the coaches and whoever's going to select in a secondary, you make one wrong move yeah. and, uh, you know, you, you, it could, it could, um, could not cost you the season, but it's, it's, it's not going to be very pretty. It's going to be really tough for him to pick a team this year in every position because I think we're stacked all over the place. Yeah. Running backs, yeah. wide receivers, yeah. secondary, uh, defense. It's it's going to be a hell of a... I'd hate to be whoever's going to sit down at that table and pick <laughs> this year's team. They love it. I really you know, I was talking about... It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a great problem to have. I was wondering, what, what do you guys mean by that? You know, you guys make a mistake and pick the wrong guy. It's not going to be uh, well, a fun problem to have. <laughs> uh, well, all of a sudden, you got Raheem Mostert tearing you up on another team. <laughs> oh, oh, we play the Dolphins too. You know, I, 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 yeah, I, right. God, that game and Mike McDaniel, right? Can you see Mike? Well, I pretty much know Kyle Shanahan, and uh, I can tell you. Uh, He's got the whole defensive department sitting there. So here's what we're going to expect, and here's what you need to expect. And I can tell you about what Trey Lance's uh, strong suits are, and because you know he was he was on talking about Trey Lance with um, uh, what's his name that has that show on. Ah, anyway, he asked him about Trey, and he's like, "Well, w- w- when I left, he wasn't a finished product. Mike left when last year." <laughs> <laughs> no, but what month did he leave? Mike's only been gone three months. You know, yeah. okay. So here's the thing: when he said it wasn't a finish, he, he wasn't a finished product. I, uh, I took from that. Okay, Mike doesn't want to say the wrong thing. He's being nice, but he, he's 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 not telling Look, us. Rombo, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb here before the season even starts, and if Kyle Shanahan and the beautiful part about being stacked all around the park on this team this year is all those people can can carry Lance. All right, yeah. I'm not saying all the way. I'm not saying he's a shit quarterback or anything like that. No, no, but, but you, they you, can carry him, carry him through. And if if Shanahan makes the right decisions and 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 makes plays that that suit him and and you know makes the play playbook around the quarterback for a change instead of around his head. Um, I'm going to say that Lance can go 12 ga- 12 wins this year with the support. Well, yeah, with the team we got, it's not with, like with the it's team not like it was got, yeah. two or three years ago. Yeah, that's true. Because now, like no. you mentioned, you got all those seasoned veterans around there. All of them know what they're doing. Uh, you know, just give them the ball, and uh, you know, and, I, and like as you know, my biggest thing is the secondary because I want them to flip the field so they can keep giving this kid another chance and if Jimmy taught him if he, if he picks up any traits from Garoppolo if he throws a pick I want him to get the shit and come back and do what Garoppolo does and just throw yeah. a touchdown the next yeah. next set yeah. you know what I mean yeah, it's, yeah that's, that was Jimmy's strong suit throws a pick and the next set next drive he's unstoppable but you know that's that, right. that, with, with Kyle Shanahan's offense, it, 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 there's a lot of timing involved. I don't know how long that takes for a quarterback to get down, but that I am concerned about that. And the timing between Debo and Lance, uh, you can Lance. Yeah, throwing other, but, to a spot. Yeah. Shanahan wants you to throw to a spot, and the receiver's got to get there. And he, uh, I mean, he has to jiggle that around a little bit. You know, he, well, what, do you, what do you change it to? I'm going to say rookie because he's only played two games. Yeah. Right? And you've got to cater to this bloke. If he's got a strong arm, well, 
we'll make some plays where, you know, he can throw the ball out the back or deep or whatever. Yeah. But um, at the same speed, time, don't make, don't make him predictable. You know, th- get him to spread the ball around. Use like Jimmy did uh, early on, you know, throw it mm. to seven, eight, nine different receivers. That keeps the uh, opposition guessing. It, it, it doesn't make him predictable, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's harder uh, for them to set up. You know? Exactly. A little bit of surprise. One thing we can believe in, though, they don't know Lance very well. Not yet. Uh, my only problem is, does Lance know enough to fool anybody just yet? So that, that means in the first few weeks, we're going to see if they're confused by Trey, uh, then we're on a roll. They'll never figure it out before the end of the season. <sighs> You know I, I mean? just wish that he that he uh, Shanahan knows he can run out of the pocket and extend the play, and if I see him like Jimmy G and and Bethard standing there in the pocket getting smashed, <laughs> well, you know who's who's delegating that bullshit, don't you? It's going to yeah. be Kyle. And, and 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 the thing is, you could see Kyle wanted him to do that last year. You know, and you, you know about the story with with. Uh, uh, Steve, right? Uh, the 49ers tied his legs together because uh, he used to like to bail. You know, the problem with quarterbacks who can do that is they end up relying on that when they've missed a the play. Yeah, but you got you got to ease him. I think if he's that type of a quarterback, you got to ease it. him into being a pocket pass passer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just slowly, slowly, slowly say, look. Don't run unless it, that's it. You can't see anything else, all right? And just slowly, eat, you know, teach him to step up in the, into the, in the step pocket. forward into It'll the pocket and, and things like that. You can't just change somebody overnight. Yeah. That's going to be the thing. But, you know, as I said, you know, you still got Debo there. You got George. You can dump the ball off. If nothing else, always have your outlets ready. Understand that, uh, well, you know what? Trey Sermon may have a better role this year because I understand Sermon is good out of the backfield, uh, and he could be that outlet guy. Well, Whereas to Tavar- <laughs> Davis, Trey, you Davis reckon, Price is What not. if he doesn't make it? I know. What if they cut him? No, you know what? <laughs> Davis Price is uh, – well, yeah, here's the thing, Tony. We've got – Jeffrey Wilson Jr., who is excellent catching passes out of the backfield. Of the 49ers on that, don't entertain any thoughts to get rid of Jeffrey Wilson Jr. He is modern when it comes to taking that short pass. And if Kyle, and that's the essence of Kyle's offense anyway, uh, with the receiving core we've had. Well, what a, so, yeah, that could Jeff change Wilson up. Jr., what about um, the other guy, uh, six foot three, whatever? Ah, um, oh, Jesus. What kind what, of. Is it somebody we just call, picked up? Call him the ma- no, no, no. He's our, our boy. What? Dwight? Receiver. Yeah, okay. Juwan you, Jennings. You got jo- okay, you got Juwan, yeah. Juwan Jennings, to me, is one of the most underrated players on our team. He got- hasn't been used enough, and he's got plenty of yak in him as well. Yeah. It was a strong kid. You know what? Last year, Juwan got himself into trouble. He, there was one play when he was supposed to fight through the defense – and again, with that throwing the ball to a spot, luckily it wasn't picked off. But Jennings failed to get through a, a, a block, and he was supposed to be in an area at a certain time to <laughs> get the ball. Uh, from that point on, after getting chastised, he never got caught up in a route again the rest of the season that I know of. And uh, he made a lot of great, so spectacular plays. So if you had to pick between Juwan Jennings and Sermon, who would you pick? I'm going, well... Going with Juwan, if for no other reason that he's been there and done that, you know. I, See what when I, I mean? say Sermon, Sermon has, you know, you're right. Sermon has no experience because they didn't play him much last year. So you're wow. right. He lost his job to there's the fifth round There's a dilemma there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big dilemma all over that team. Where, you know, I've sat down, looked at it, and thought, shit, who do you pick here? Who do you pick there? Jesus Christ. Uh, I'd hate to be the bloke picking the side. Yeah. We're, uh, we're going to have some some. We're some in a things. good spot. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to see in the preseason. Although you're not, you're not going to see the first stringers out there very long. It's going to be like a, a couple of plays and that's it, right? Um, it's going to be interesting to see. We, we don't need guys. the first stringers to be out there at all. Just get all these youngsters out there and have a good look at them. Well, that's what they're going to do. That's pretty much what they want well, to do. Well, that's what anyway. I do. Yeah, you got to do that. You know I, mean? I know what my first stringers play like. I don't, what do I need to put them out there for? 
And Kyle knows – Kyle learns a lot from what guys do in practice. That's where he makes his biggest judgment calls anyway. He doesn't make them in those preseason games from, from what I read. The only first stringers I'd put out there are the, the bloody O-line just to get some practice in to protect, oh. pr- to protect Trey. And Tony, they're so tender. I, I don't know. I, 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 we don't have any. Tony, you can't put them out there. They're going to get hurt. If they get hurt, can you imagine – if the I, I don't even it's pretty sure I think Brindle's going to be the starting center this year. So I'm thinking, you know, we 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 have got a problem. You got a young quarterback that's going to need all the help he can get in this system in particular. Max coming back, Rombo. Max, coming uh, you really back. think so? Yeah, he's on his honeymoon. You remember that's why they call it the honeymoon, right? <laughs> they can't get him. They, they can't get him off. His, you need a bloody, uh, what do you call it, a crane to get him off his wife. He's just all <laughs> yeah. excited, traveling yeah. around the world. And, 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 you know, and she's that's where babies like, come from. Honeymoons. <laughs> and she's saying things like, oh, do you have to go now? Well, no. <laughs> I mean, OTAs are like voluntary. I can hang out. Well, let's, let's go ahead and, and plan something here for the next few weeks. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, th- I think this, he's coming back. I think he's just excited, you know what he, I mean? He's yeah, not. Yeah. He's Got yeah. to develop a relationship, though. He's got to get because Alex Mack had actually handhold uh, Trey through through the first season because that's what he does. He makes it easy on the quarterback, right? So if he's not there and I got to work Jake Brindle, this guy said Jake Brindle, really? And you seen what Kyle said about Mack? You don't know what I know. <laughs> I wish he would <laughs> stop that. Kyle, it is is it? You know. <laughs> He's always so getting subliminal me, messages. You got to figure things out. Yeah. yeah. To me, when he said, "You don't know what I know," that to me that means he's coming back for one more year. Well, hopefully. But, well, remember when we, when we got Trent Williams? They kept Joe Staley's secret quiet as could be, and then they sprung it on us. Now, well, we knew Joe wasn't coming back uh, early on, and we went ahead and, and got that deal for Trent Williams because when they got Trent Williams. Wait a minute. Well, where's Joe going to play? Oh, oh, okay. Wow. And then <laughs> Joe endorses Trent Williams, you know. And I said, "Oh, this is this is freaking awesome." Okay, okay, you know. But I, I, I guarantee you, uh, 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 with Alex Mack, it's all about his honeymoon. He's already <laughs> asked. I think he asked Kyle for you know. Oh, look, I'm here. Can I stay a little bit longer or whatever? <laughs> <So> <laughs> just to join himself. <laughs> well, Tony, we're going to go ahead and go. I'm going to take you We're sitting there having fun because there's somebody else hanging on the phone line so I can talk to you forever. But we're going to go ahead and go, ahead and I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right, brother. Shout out to everyone and see you in the next chapter. Looking forward to it. Cheers, Cheers, Tony. mate. Cheers. All right. And, uh, and let's go to Casey, whom we've not talked to in days and days and days. Casey! KC, oh, KC, KC, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, Casey's a driver, right, when, when this happens, I'm just hoping nothing bad, because, you know, I really like Casey, you know, well, I like everybody who calls him, but Casey's, just, you know, I know what he's doing, and I hope he's okay, well, fam, you know what? Yeah, uh, looks like we're gonna have a what to call it. You know, uh, as Brian Culp says, please hit that like button. We're gonna check out tonight a little early, uh, and do, tomorrow something's gonna be. Do we have OTAs? We got two. Oh, we got what? Do we got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday. We got we'll, we'll next week. Anyway, is that Tony? Atlanta, Tony, get in there. Bro, what's going on, Tony? Other than roasting Don Burr, like we Michael loves to do, and uh, and I noticed that you take your shots at the poor Burr child. You know, there's going to be a foundation probably at some point uh, for donations to st- st- stop hating on Don Burr. <laughs> <laughs> Don, you know what? Honestly, you set yourself up for those killings. You know, being a Detroit fan, I understand your pain and all, but you know. You need to know your position in this world as a Detroit Lions fan. You know, don't. Why take all that abuse? 
Well, Tony, 1957. <laughs> That's the last world championship. Jim Brown was a rookie. They beat Jim Brown. They beat him bad. 1957. The White Ice now was president, and neither you or I was even here on this earth yet, Don. And, and, you, and, you, and you know, you know, Tony. Was it World War? II? Was that World? That's near the end of World War Two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was World War Two had been over with, but still, yeah, well, just, not long. You know, the, 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 Rat Pack, the Rat Pack hadn't even formed and got together yet <laughs> with Sammy Davis and uh, uh Martin, Frank Sinatra. They hadn't even got together yet. <laughs> And, and oh. like you said, he's in here talking major poo poo. Yeah, you know the, the Super Bowl era hadn't gotten started yet, which is why when the Rams start talking about all their championships, I say, "You guys, I, were the Rams once the Browns?" I mean, I, I, you know, it's so funny because um, that was uh, uh, what's the name shed some light on that uh, R- the Ramilia of uh, Rudy, right? Rudy shed some light on yeah. you know, Ron. We the Rams were like the first organization that uh, signed, signed black ball players, and also we've won as many championships. And he's going on and on, right? Uh, and I, you know, Tony, what, 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 were you the Rams? No, well, no, we were we were the Browns, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, here we go, <laughs> Tony. Yes, it does. It matters a lot. You know what? The Rams are the Rams, and the Browns are the Browns. Okay, ownership switching is yep. one thing, but still. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they were they were the Cleveland Rams at one time in the 1950s. <laughs> and Before they, they moved out to Los Angeles, and they won some championships. Hey, Marvel, they... it's funny because they're showing they they started uh, earlier today. They they do this every uh, Memorial Day weekend. Mm. They're showing Super Bowl highlights on half hour, Super Bowl after Super Bowl. Right now, I'm watching with the sound down Super Bowl 19. They're showing how Joe Montana and Roger Craig them dissect the great Dan Marino. I'm watching you know, it right now. You, you know, those are... The NFL Network. And, and Dan Marino, there's a guy everybody needs to feel sorry for. Dan Marino was one of the best quarterbacks uh, to ever play the game yes. that just couldn't yes. get over the hump. And I had to run into people like Joe Montana. You know, but Marino... Top oh, five. Oh, man. Top five. Yeah. Yep. Um, he, um, and then, you know, they didn't have a defense. And then um, they almost got back to another Super Bowl. It was at 92. But Buffalo beat them, but uh, they would have had to play the Cowboys. But <laughs> other than that, Cowboys uh, were pretty good back then. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, <sighs> Willing and Dealing, yeah, they were pretty good. But uh, yeah, uh, quick bait, quick bait. If you're if you're uh, watching or listening, quick bait, bird, quick bait, Don or whatever. <laughs> your Lions are ass, and they will always be ass. And they had two Hall of Famers. Got out in the prime of their careers because you wouldn't trade them. You held them hostage. And it was lucky that uh, Matthew Stafford, look what happened when Matthew Stafford got out. He ain't thinking about Detroit. Poor guy took his whole career, though, to get out. (laughs) I wonder what he said to make him, to finally say, okay, you want out? You want out, Matthew? What have I been trying to tell you for the last five years? Yes! Okay, fine. You're out. We're going to make that happen. You know, (laughs) but, but Megatron and, and anybody else that tried to get out, you know, Megatron, if he even was, came back, even 10 years from now, the Lions would claim rights on him. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, it, it was it was funny because with him and Barry Sanders, they were talking about you know, paying some of their money back. I don't know how that worked out. It, it got kind of <laughs> ugly. Oh, it I, got kind of ugly. There. I don't oh, know. What an embarrassment. You know, Barry Sanders one of the, would have been probably the greatest running back of all time had he continued to play. Had he been able to get traded to a team that was worth a damn. This 49er offensive line in the in 1984, which I'm watching, man, they had a couple good players like Randy Cross. Oh, yeah. That should get some Hall of Fame consideration. They never talked about their offensive line. They were good. You know, uh, there's a couple other guys, too, and the defense, uh, you know, was was very good, too. Uh, yeah, Tina Turner. Yeah, Kina. Yeah. You know what's so funny, though? Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about the pass rush. Uh, everybody talks about, uh, oh, Jesus, the number 90. Dwayne Boyd. Well, not, not only him, but the one who the Cowboys went and got. Uh, oh, Charles Haley? You know, Charles had a problem with Jerry Rice. Can you imagine? That. Yeah, him and Jerry Rice had a serious problem. I don't know. I forget the story of what Jerry did. But Haley hated Jerry Rice. 
And, he, and Jerry was spent wow. most of his time trying to make up to him. And that's why when the Cowboys came along and offered him uh, out, because the 49ers were not going to make a choice between Haley and Rice. It was automatically, mm-hmm. it was going to be Rice. So, you know, Haley went to uh, Dallas. And you know what? He, to this day, gives more uh, connection with the Cowboys than he does the 49ers. Huh. Yeah, because yeah, he won his first two with the Niners, and he won three more with the Cowboys. Yeah. But so he, he came is. back to the Niners. Well, he, he comes back to one year, then he came back to the Niners, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, year, so. but his biggest allegiance, I think, is with the Cowboys. He goes back there. He has been going back there every year uh, to help with the uh, the incoming uh, kids too. Mm-hmm, so you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that's fine. You know, uh, so, Rambo, when is your is, uh, are your OTAs? Uh, when is your OTAs? It seems to me they're in the middle. Of, I've, you know what? I wasn't paying close attention to that schedule. I think it's middle of next week. We don't start tomorrow. Yeah, I'll I think next we week too. Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in there. Uh, it's in the mm-hmm. middle of the week. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm looking forward to it. Everybody's starting to talk about all oh, of them. The Falcons got these big receivers. Yeah, but, you know, Vegas has us over under. They got us not winning more than five games. So I'm like, yeah, we're going to see about that. Yeah, Vegas does that too. Vegas, you know what? Vegas will give maybe two teams uh, a decent chance to win. I think they do that to draw bets. You know, because yep. every year they, yep. they have teams winning eight, nine, ten games. You rarely see them uh, give any team a, a, a high percentage of wins. I've noticed that down through the years. I say, you know what, Vegas, <laughs> 49ers weren't supposed to win no 13 games in 2019. <laughs> Before to man. Vegas, that was not going to happen. <laughs> You know, whatever the number is, whatever the number is on the Rams, you better take the under. <laughs> That's what I tell you. I know. Everybody's Rams, gonna get them, especially with Whit- uh, who's a Whitaker, uh, Whitworth. Whitworth thought, you know, you cannot lose offensive linemen like the Rams do each and every year. And face him like that. And continue. Exactly. Yeah. And Rambo, they can't have if, if Stafford goes down. They, they, I don't even know who this backup quarterback is. Uh, Rudy told me, but I'm like, huh. See, you don't even know who he was. If they get a couple of injuries, they're going to be hurt, yeah. Ram fans, why are you in here? Who's, who's your backup QB? <laughs> That's a good question. I, he said, we, some, guy, some, some guy that does this, does, I'm like, he, he's not credible, man. You know, I think that they had a kid that was pretty mobile, and they lost in the NFC playoffs two years ago. But didn't he go to Washington? Mike Glennon. <laughs> Mike Glennon, yeah, yeah. I was wondering where He's Mike Glennon was. Wherever Mike Glennon goes, the team's in deep trouble if the quarterback goes down. It's Mike Glennon. Oh, why yeah, does he – Chicago, con- Tampa. He's, He's been, been all over the place. How does he keep getting yep. a job? He's like – well, Sutfeld's the same way. Sutfeld's not – Sutfeld can't not play. Mike Glennon's not good. Yeah, Mike Glennon's not good. I want, to see how, I want to see how this uh, Garofalo thing plays out, though, as he's getting stronger with the shoulders, getting stronger. Yeah. It's been since March, so he's almost three months. Because Rambo, somebody's going to go down, they're going to be calling you guys. For yeah, him. he's got another four weeks, right? June is uh, yeah. has arrived. And yeah. He's supposed to be able to start uh, throwing uh, next month. I, I forgot what time in the month he's going to be starting to throw, though. Is it, uh-huh. is it mid Early July or mid July? I don't know. If yeah, somebody's gonna be calling, and uh, yeah. you guys are gonna, gonna deal with them, or you're gonna keep them, you know. I, it's really funny because the 49ers keep making it clear, and they keep leaving, dropping little openings in the door. That well, we're we're going to try to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, but when there's no guarantees, <laughs> and yeah. and then you hear the conversation of well, if Jimmy's here, we expect for him to uh, compete. Kyle, what are you talking about? Yeah, they're going back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you what, what, what do you what do you mean compete? If Jimmy competes against Trey, it's not fair. Trey's not doesn't know everything he needs to know. Not for somebody that's been with the team for years. So yeah, that's not going to work. That means Jimmy stays. So I don't know. I think they're just they, I think they're just talking on both sides of the mouth. Jimmy doesn't want to be there anymore either. I'm pretty sure of that. I mean, I don't yeah. think he wants to play yeah. the point yeah. ers now. You know, in our in our game today, Rambo. And don't think that just because you don't hear them talking about it mm. the, with social media, the players hear 
and watch a lot of this stuff that are said by, by the fan bases. A lot, a lot of the players, I bet you watch your show. You don't hear about them. <laughs> yeah, you know, unless you got to be, you got to be Grant and say something that really sets them on fire, and then they'll speak. <laughs> yeah, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be thick skinned. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I, I think I got to think going on with Jimmy Ward. Uh, I've so, talked to him on social media a few times, and I've always praised uh-huh. Jimmy Ward. Even everybody was hating on Jimmy Ward, just hating him. That's always tell me, look, I'm telling you guys right now, you stop making him play cornerback and put him at safety, I guarantee you, Jimmy Ward can play ball, guys. Don't get it wrong. He's always hurt. Yeah, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. He can play football. And look, I knew it. <laughs> anyway, Tony, yep. looks like we're – Tell me, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, let, let, let's talk. And ready to go. You're, I'm reading what he says. Ready to go. You're the clown. You don't even know who your backup quarterback is. <laughs> He's calling you a clown for uh, calling out your backup quarterback. Somebody else had to tell us. That wasn't a Ram fan. Was that a Ram fan? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was Rudy. It was Rudy. No, I mean, on the chat just a few minutes ago, somebody said Mike Glennon. That wasn't Rudy. Anyway, we know. Yeah. If Stafford goes down, it's all over but the shout. Glennon cannot play no yeah, football. Because Mike Glennon, well, Mike Glennon, you just play wrong. The ball will come right to you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play move. Ball. <laughs> yep. Just play your area. It'll come right. But Ron Ball, it's been a pleasure. You have a, a good Memorial Day. Continue weekend, your yes. Memorial Day weekend. Time to queue. Uh, people in the chat, please hit the like button. It's, it's uh, over 180 of us in the chat. But only 46 of us have hit the like button. Hit the just, like, hit the like, hit the like. Me, it just goes to show you how many Rams fans and Don Burr people we got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Tony. Appreciate you. Have you a good tomorrow. night, Rambo. You you're, too. You're the best in the business. Shout out to your production Thanks. team. Good night. Thanks, Tony. Talk to you tomorrow. It goes to Tony. Er, er, Bethel. Hey, Rumble. Bethel, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm feeling great about our secondary. I, if there's anything I'm going to stop worrying about, I'm worried about a, a few things on this team, but not the secondary, as they were the the guys last year that everybody said before the season started. Well, Forty Nineers look really good defensively, but that secondary is questionable. I said, no, they're not. We our front line defense will 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 will, will, will take care of that, and well. No, we lost a couple of critical games. Yeah. But anyway, the secondary looks awfully good this year. Well, you know, I could, you know what I mean? I could always go down third, third. Bethel, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bethel, what do you think about the secondary? Are you feeling as confident as I am about it? Hey, if, if our front seven... Uh, well, our front four get to the quarterback. It doesn't matter how our secondary plays. If they could, because remember, you know, a lot of the times we didn't have good uh, secondary, and if it wasn't for both, uh, you know, do, uh, disrupting the quarterback or sacking the quarterback, there would have been some good touchdowns right there if it wasn't for them. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's why. Uh, like you said, you know, we needed pass rush for a long time, and that's one main thing that you really need. And that's what helps the secondary because they don't have to cover for a long time if, you're, if your uh, forefront could get to the quarterback in time or disrupt no, it. And, and, Bethel, not only that, so, if, if that pass rush is hassling that quarterback, I can plant in a position – and I can take my shots because I know where that receiver is. All I got to do is get ready to play an errant throw because that quarterback's under siege. Yeah. And now I can, I can make myself, I can play close. I don't have to play off too far. There's a whole, all kind of advantages of watching that quarterback struggle from the heat he's getting up front. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because how many times did Richard Sherman get an interception and there was not a receiver there because the quarterback was under pressure? And he just threw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. and he just threw it. So, you know, and you know, so I think you know our defense is gonna be good. It just, uh, I, uh, if I remember right, last year who was Trey Lance's uh, 
always working with the second as, backups. I mean, as far as what, receivers or what are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, the whole front line, he was working with a lot of backups. Oh, offensive set. line? And, yeah, offensive line. And right now, he's working with everybody that's the same that he was last year. He's still working with those people. Because uh, remember, a lot of the like, a lot of the main ones are not out there practicing yet. Yeah, but so, there, there, there's no pass rush though. Yeah. Anyway, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to find out uh, more about that. They're going to test him, but more importantly, mm-hmm. everybody's got to between him and the off wide receivers and everybody receiving. That's something that's got to get down. It takes a little time. They got to get back and get that started. They they developed a little chemistry last year, I'm pretty sure. But yeah. now is a time when they got to get a precision, man. Because you know this is why people don't understand when they're getting on Jimmy Garoppolo how tough that job is at Kyle Shanahan's offense. Timing, Kyle Shanahan. If you know how we talk about how a guru he is, it takes time to get that yeah. down. It really does. So we're gonna see. And uh, hopefully Kyle doesn't does it just make it basic somewhat for a while, and uh, until he can get uh, it. I heard in uh, practice uh, he's throwing a lot of uh, uh, down down uh, checks down, uh, down like oh, down, downs? The, down in the field check uh-huh. downs. Yeah, the same thing that Jimmy was doing. So if he's doing everything that Jimmy is doing, and he has that long ball when he needs it with the speedster in here. Mm. You know, you have you have both things right there, you know, and you know, and one thing, another thing is that, you know, if if he was playing okay when you know he was hurt, imagine when he's not hurt. How yeah, I'm looking forward to you that. know, much, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's another good thing that you know you could look forward to because, you know, now he has two ways that he could throw because he had to learn another way how to throw. Yeah, off, you the, know, because off, the, of the, off the middle yeah. figure, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and not, not a lot of quarterbacks could do that, you know. So, you know, if you ever get hurt or something, you know, you know another way how to throw it. I think yeah. that's why that's why Jimmy was uh, throwing the ball. Some of them was throwing, you know, not good. Some of them were good, you know, because he had to learn how to throw it, you know, because of his finger. Thumb, of all the things. The same way. Yeah. Yeah. But so, uh, yeah, the thing uh, is, oh, with, with Kyle Shanahan, uh, those those timing routes he has are to take advantage of the uh, the linebackers and, and, and players in the middle of the field that that shouldn't have a chance against uh, the more athletic receivers and running back. So th- those are part of uh, what Kyle wants to do. So we're gonna you know, that's got to develop for him to be able to throw deep is is, is definitely a plus though. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're gonna have to see develop. Otherwise. I'm not sure how that's going to work because contrary to what people believe that we just threw the ball short because Jimmy can't throw it long, that, which is a joke, but it's, <laughs> that's Kyle's <laughs> offense. That's why it's designed to get the ball into the playmaker's hands quickly and take stress off the offensive line. So now if that offensive line is, is not as good as it was last year, I'm a little concerned about that because yeah. now you've got a, a quarterback that's going to have to learn this and he's got no time. He can bail oh, and yeah, run, um, but I don't want him getting hurt. I wanted to, I want to say grad, congratulations to McGlinchey. I think he's gonna get married already. What? Uh, he engaged. He uh, asked his girlfriend to uh, post to him. So I think she said, "Yeah, they're all kiddo was all grad." You know, saying George thanks is always to, there. Oh, Mr. PR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen him with E40 and uh, Ice Cube. <laughs> George and him and, and him and Debo watching basketball. I mean, watching the Warriors. I'm laughing, man. I said, you know, George. When's the last time the wife he's seen you, George? You're all over the place nowadays. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Well, he actually, he did some photos with her hanging out too. But George is watching the basketball game. He's he, he's working the media. I mean, he, and you know he's working out and training. Yeah. He's got the tight end thing going to camp, going to everything else. George is just a really busy guy. Now we never lose George Kittle. Ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> God, the dude is so cool. So, yeah, there, yeah. I think he had a you sh- you check with him, 
And yeah. uh, I think a right receiver with him, too. I'm not sure. For the Warriors game? Um, yeah. So... Yeah, well, you, you know, yeah. as I say, he's he's just that he's just he's Mr. Sociable man. He's and he takes up for everybody on the team. If there's any heat coming toward any one of our players, George is there to let them know, no, no, that's that, that's that's a teammate, that's, that's, you know. That's a teammate. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you know, it's you know, you sometimes you gotta learn uh, when to um, be there for your teammates, you know. So, yeah. you know, it shows a a lot of character. So, and plus George likes to help out people. He's, you know, he cares about the, you know, his teammates and everything. So, you know, yeah. that's how the yeah. kind of culture we have, you know, in, in our, in our part, you know, so. I, you know, and, and I hope it stays that way, you know, because. Uh, yeah. It's been real good for the last few years. Oh, uh, I actually found out uh, a long time ago. I just, you know, never mentioned it, but, you know. I heard uh, in the, I think it was uh, in the playoffs, uh, that the Rams, uh, the Rams side of the tickets were more expensive than the Niner tickets. The Niner tickets were cheaper, and the because of volume, Rams friends would. And I <laughs> you was don't sell like, as many Rams ain't, tickets. Ain't that their house? <laughs> ain't that their house? And That's ain't they supposed said. to be more expensive for us, <laughs> not for them? As <laughs> so, uh, like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, hey, that, that that's how that's how I said that that's our house because even their house, our tickets are cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, I thought that was funny. <laughs> oh God, I didn't even know. I love the way you find out about these things. I get to find out from you because man, that's the thing. You aren't talking about whose house it is, but you got to pay more money than we do when we're visitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know that that says that says a lot. You know, so that's, I oh, thought that was funny. God, I can't wait till the next season. The only thing is, is we cannot lose to the Rams to start the season. Oh, another or, thing. Yeah. Uh, the Rams. Cannot lose to the Buffalo Bills okay. because if they lose to Buffalo Bills and the and say Buffalo would have beat Kansas City and would have went to the Super Bowl, then that means the Rams would have lost the Super Bowl yeah. and against the that's, Buffalo Bills. So, true. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that that says a lot too. Yeah, that's, so that's, because Josh Allen, I bet you anything, he would have carved up that uh, Rams defense apart. Oh, yeah. I said, you uh, know, they, I think he, I, Kansas City just – it's one of those games where whoever had the ball last wins. That's just all yeah. happened there. Well, Bethel, I'll tell you what, I'm going to yeah. be back tomorrow looking for you, and uh, let's see what develops between now and then. You know there's going to be some more news of some kind. <laughs> so, yeah, but, <laughs> all right, Rumble. Like always, good show. Thanks, Hit the man. like. Go Niners. Thanks, thanks Bethel. Right, good night. Have a great night, man. And – hey. Hey, Oki Niner, there he is. Oki, thanks, fam. <laughs> I'm the street. Hey, hey, North Carolina. I'm from the beans, you know. Hello. Nine one zero. North North Carolina. Hello. <clears throat> NC. Hello, hello. I think he's not. He's, uh, I think he's not near his phone. He got his own speaker. North Carolina. Call him North Carolina. Hey, yo, JT. Is it JT? North Carolina. Carolina. It's too Hello. <laughs> JT. <laughs> hello. 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 All right, so is it? Let's go. All right, let's go back and check in on. Right, let's go check on Casey. Hey, Casey, where you at, man? Uh, what's shaking, Rumble? Casey, we called you. We were looking for you earlier. Yeah, everything okay? Casey. I mean, I had I haven't I haven't called in for uh I haven't called in for a few weeks, Rombo. Uh, 
I, you I know, know, I feel, I feel like I'm, has anything has anything happened in the last few uh, in the last week or so? Have I missed anything? Actually, not really. <laughs> uh, other than uh, were there uh, any were there any qu- crazy Twitter conversations or any there, crazy there, there YouTube little, conversations that went down? Did I miss oh, anything? You did. You did miss that. Of course, that Javon Kinlaw has now put Grant on the top of his poo poo list. But other than that, oh, Casey, I, no. I think I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bravo, yeah. man. You know, we I've been calling in for like five years now. Yeah. And every now and then this rat bastard <laughs> <laughs> pops up every now and then and something about the Grant Cone show and yeah. featuring the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners are always taking a back seat to this guy. You know. Rumble, was... man, this guy, Javon Kinlaw, might not make <laughs> one sack this next year, but at least he took out Grant Code on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Casey, here's the thing. Oh you know, th- there are Rumble. people that you can mess with. If you have a consistent fashion, you need to know how to alter it for certain people. I don't don't get that dude is too no, big, this Casey. Guy, this Rumble, I'm, some people God. they think they think it don't sink, Rumble. You know what I'm saying? They think yeah. You know, they think uh, freedom of speech means uh, freedom of consequence. Well, yeah, and well, that, that's Javon the problem Kinlaw right said, there. Yeah. Javon Kinlaw said, this is the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm from the sucker free city. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> and he said, my <laughs> nuts is bigger than yours. <laughs> don't, don't rehash it. Don't do it, Casey. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> Rumble! His words, not mine. Rumble. Grant said, "All right, all right." Hey, but what's what was? Did oh you see the, the footage of, of of that camera shot of that angle that Javon <laughs> had, and he, as he was talking, and stuff stuff was flying out of his mouth, and and, and you know, yeah. keep my main name out of your <laughs> mouth. Remember, you stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. You know, I'm sitting there watching. And then I saw. This, this and then scary. I saw. I saw. Javon Kimlaw made an Instagram post with his truck, and Brandon Ayuk left a comment that said, "My truck's is bigger than yours." <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I, I, I say, you know, it, it's okay to do what you do if that's what you do, but you know, you need to know where to do that and where not to do that. You know, don't. Yeah. Grant went down a list of why are you mad, Javon? Why would you do that, Grant? Now yeah, your antagonism. No, this guy is uh, because I said this. Because Rumble, I said we, this. We, I think, because I said this. Oh, Grant, don't do that. And sure enough, yeah, it got crazy. You know, Rumble. I think uh, Niner Mike would call in and tell this guy to suck a lemon. You know what I mean, Rumble? <laughs> I mean, what the hell is this guy's problem? Like, this is who the hell is this guy? What kind of who let who the fuck let this guy in? You know what I mean? This guy's a credentialed reporter. He's gone through college and schooling to get to this point in his life. And he picks Javon Kinlaw. Oh, Rambo, there's uh, there's stupid. You know what is what does that say? Stupid is stupid does. I don't know, Rambo. These guys. Are... Well, you, but, but okay. The point, thing is, Rambo? Casey, it's it, it. The thing is, it makes sense because he's been talking about every guy on the team like that. I mean, how about how bad has he talked about about Jimmy Garoppolo? Garoppolo never says a word to him. You know, and all the Eric Armstead mild yeah. response. You know, nobody ever gets mad with him like that. So you know, of course, you feel well, you know, like. But you know what, Rumble? I, I do I, here's 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 my here's my perspective, Rumble. I'm a large man, Rumble. I'm six feet tall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I've lost a lot of weight in my life, Rumble. In fact, I've lost so much weight in my life, I don't even like to tell people. Okay. <laughs> so I'll tell you this: I'm over. Okay. I weigh over three hundred pounds, Rumble. I'm a really? big guy. All right. Yeah, man. I'm a big guy, and uh, there's sometimes in your lives like people. It takes a lot for someone to want to step to someone that's bigger than them. You know especially what I mean? that much bigger, yeah. And so, and really, the way that someone does it is more important than, you know, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And so, I don't blame Javon. I, in fact, I think Javon was saying, I'm taking one for the team on this one. And I think that's commendable, to be honest. Yeah. So, that's why I mean, I'm, 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 I'm impressed with, uh, at this point, well, the thing is, I, we don't need this to continue, though. So I'm hoping Javon. Javon, I understand he's. Yeah, no, it's sad, relaxed. but you know, it's also not. It's also not something Javon started. You know what I mean? So it's. Well, uh, well yeah. Yeah, I wish it's unfortunate. But you know, as, I as wish, a ball player, uh, 
you 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 got to know you get people going to take shots at you. I mean, Forty Nine er fans. Take, here's here's a good example. Two out of three seasons we've made it to the NFCG. We went to the Super Bowl and MCG Championship. And, and people still talk about Jimmy Garoppolo like he's one of the worst quarterbacks in football history. So you know you've got to mm-hmm. be able to understand the mentality of people watching. It goes to the media, people, and everything else. It, it, you, you need to be able to handle that. It's why Grobble's my hero because yeah. he has taken some absolute crap. And I think 70% well, of it is unwarranted. Too, and he says nothing. That's how you handle it. You're stress-free. Here's, it can't bother you. Here's, here's another angle to it, though. There, after the video that, he, that Grant posts about how, in his mind, it ran through him that he would never have to work again and all this stuff. You know, this is someone <laughs> that the 49ers led into the building yeah. and have followed the team. And so now, what if it was Debo or George Kittle or, you know, someone that Grant felt like that he could bully, you know? And so there's this whole other angle of, like, would he do this if OBJ was in the room, if Peyton Manning was in the room? Would, would millions of dollars flash before his eyes if he pissed off Peyton Manning and said, hey, you got a bigger forehead than, you know, whatever, you know, something like yeah. that stupid, right? Whatever that's, it is. That's a good so, point. So, you know, what's Grant going to do when it's a homeless person and had, they got nothing to lose? You know what I mean? So now it's a real wake-up call and a reality check on some level. You know, the domino's been set. And I, I'm just happy that that happened, to be honest, because I'm tired of this, <laughs> tired of this Rumble. Casey, yeah, I, I like the think... thumbnail that you got the other night, Rumble. I like that thumbnail, but I don't want to be talking about that right now. I want to be it's... talking about but Casey, the secondary I... and Casey, every Thomas and all this stuff, let, man. Let me, let me ask you a question, though. Do you think that Grant's going to stop it? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I mean, he's already on about Trey Lance. Trey Lance is his next victim, and Rumble, man, you know, you make your bed, you got to lie in it, Rumble. I don't know, man. I, I worry for this, uh, well, this what, lost it's, soul. It's his style. It's what That's he does. I sit it, and I pray, yeah. Rumble. Hmm. I sit and I pray for the lost souls. And I call into the Reverend Rombo's <laughs> <laughs> holiest of podcasts with the Rombo sports. You know, I, and I just watch it, it, right. the Lord but, go to work. But you know what? <laughs> Eventually, Kyle's going to say, listen, guys, cut the crap. With I understand. I, if nobody knows better than I do. But listen, we're not going to go back and forth to Grant Cohn. We're not going to do it. We got other things we got to do. Let's focus. I, if I'm a coach, that's what I do. You know, I don't want you out I here. We and I got to look man. at. I'm tired of this shit. You know, but you know, you know? We, 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 reporters are going to report what they do, and you just let them do it. Yeah. You have to. It's no, part I'm of the like, job. You know what's really sick too is that whole like, which one was it? Was it this or that and stuff? Oh, he's so nasty, Rumble. I don't like that the, the world champion San Francisco 49ers have this rat in their building right now, Rumble. I don't <laughs> like that, Rumble. No other way around it. It is what it is. Yeah, you did. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm, okay. I'll, I'll make a bet with you right now. Casey, I think <laughs> that he tones it down a bit in this upcoming season. I think Grant looked visibly shaken uh, in a couple of those videos. Uh, he really does look like usually Grant that slides off of me. Grant, so, but I, he really looks shook a little bit on that. So I think he calls yeah, it down. And Javon, Javon needs to have at least six sacks next season to yeah, really rub the face too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Rumble, you know, a lot's changed in the last month, man. I'm no longer driving cabs, man. They uh they hit me with, they called me up one day, they said, Oh, someone says uh it smells like skunk and uh we want you to go down the street and pee in a cup and I said, uh, not today. <laughs> 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 I said, I got to go, go and meditate Case. and medicate. <laughs> Case, we got to go. I, You know, Case, you, you'll, you'll get through this. I know you're going to get through this and, and, and land on your feet. Things always so, turn around. Things you know, always or, turn around, man. If they, if, let somebody else give them their sample, okay? <laughs> I mean, you ask somebody else <laughs> that you know will be fine. <laughs> they pass those tests all the time. Case, yeah, I can't stand it. Don't rumble. be in all these it's days a, and weeks not calling. I'll look for you tomorrow. I know, bro. I'm, I'm so glad you're here, Rumble. Thank you for showing up at 8 <laughs> o'clock on the, the last second with the, with the show tonight. Appreciate it. Hey, it's always a pleasure, Case. I was watching the NBA final. I would have been earlier, actually. Or, yeah. But anyway, I mean, the playoffs. All right, Case. Have a great night. Here goes, Case. Uh, 910 North Carolina. Let's see if we can get NC again. In, in North Carolina. Uh, yeah. There you are. 
Hey, what, what is your you name? Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What is your name? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is um, this is the one and only. I'm the, I'm just an ultimate fan, and I'm really very humbled to be uh, to ha just have a moment in time to speak to the nation, the 49 er nation, and I just want to you know be brief and get to the point. You know, um, but I appreciate we spoke up before. Um, so I, and, and also I want to thank everybody for letting me on the conversation. So I'll make it quick. Uh, I'm just um, grateful right now to be uh, you know a fan. Uh, grateful for the show. I'm happy that we have Trey Lance. I think that he reminds me of Michael Vick, a mix of Michael Vick and uh, Ben Roethlisberger. He's like a 74 overall, in my opinion. I think Kyle Shanahan is a great is a great coach. I think Trey Lance has a long way to go. He's only 20, turning 21 this year. Hmm. 49ers have a great defense. Hopefully, Vera gets better. And uh, uh, Grant Khan, I'm thankful for Grant Khan. I'm thankful for you. Uh, as a, as a, uh, in regards to Grant uh, Grant Khan, I think he's uh, he's funny. He's very entertaining. You know, you know, you know, and uh, he has a wonderful uh, ethnicity and background and whatnot. And uh, but you know, everyone, every dog has his day. Um, you know, and you know, he uh, played it off well. He reminds me of Chris Rock after Chris Rock got slapped by Will Smith. He played it off pretty well. Um, you know, considering the interview and uh, after the reactions or whatnot. Again, I thank everybody for letting me on the conversation. Thank God for them tonight. And they thank me. Thank God for Jer Jerry Rice. The offensive line could be better with Alex Mack. I think he's going to return because if he had, you know, if he was going to retire, you know, he would have been said something or something, you know, something would have been happening already. Um, I think we had a cool free agent, uh, free agency. Uh, I think we could have um, spent our first pick on a corner, on a young, you know, dominant corner instead of, you know, uh, investing into the line uh, on the edge. But I'm thankful for Jackson. Uh, I think, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the coach for the uh, uh, not only the linebackers, but for the defensive line, our defensive line is immaculate. He's also, a, I forgot his name, but he's a great coach. He, he's a, he's, he has the potential to be a great coach. Um, so, you know, we, you know, in sum, I would just like to say uh, I think we have a great team. And um, Trey Lance needs an opportunity, for, for, you know, uh, from week one and uh, a little bit of the preseason. You know, uh, and uh, it is uh, feet wet, and he'll be fine. I think we will, you know, go to Super Bowl. We got pressure on the uh, defensive line. We, you know, we don't have tall uh, the corners. Thank God we have uh, Ward. But you know, you know, um, it's pretty close to that Seattle type uh, uh, effect. You know what I mean? It's giving me that. You know, he maybe he could be our potential Richard Sherman. You know, even though he's pretty good, he's not excellent. He's not, you know, perfect. He's not island island man, direct or Reeves, anything like that. But you know, that's a good start. I wish we had a Keila Witherspoon. We don't have him anymore. He's six three. That would have been okay. Imagine the Keila Witherspoon at at two, and imagine uh, uh, Charvis Ward at uh, at, uh, um, at at the one. Uh, come on, man. And then at the three, you would have Emmanuel Mosley. I mean, we could have really done, did things proper, but you know. The United Nation is great. We're making the right moves. I'm proud of us. Uh, we're, you know, we're making headlines all over the world. You know, there's something about the, the mystique and the, you know, the night of mystique that's just really, uh, taking over the media right now by storm. And it's going to get better with Trey Lance. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, George Kittle, he's great. Uh, don't take any offense to him. Uh, he, he's just, you know, he, he's just really good with the media and with questions. But I really think that, uh, you know, he would prefer Trey Lance. Um, and that it, Trey Lance would give him, you know, more ability to, you know, uh, to, to have to, to have more highlights and uh, exploit his skills uh, be, because he's mobile. Because Trey Lance can, you know, improvise. He's basically that's what. And, and speaking of improvise, I just want to mention. I think that's what he is. He can potentially be a Super Bowl improviser quarterback, an MVP. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know. But again, I just thank you for your time. And uh, you know, I, I know I said a lot, but I, I, haven't, no, okay. I haven't come on in years. So, but we're just I, we're just curious as to what your name is. What, what is your name? What is your name? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, uh, glass, glass, glass is good enough. Yeah, and glass. that's what people know me by glass. Yeah, oh, glass, glass from New York, from Brooklyn, New York. So yeah. Niners, Niners have fans all over the world, and I'm from New York. I'm but I'm out here in North Carolina, we representing, and I appreciate your time. All right, fam. Well, right, glass, fam. it's great to meet you again. And uh, it seems I've heard that name before. <laughs> but we'll we'll talk. To, I'll be back tomorrow if you got time. Yeah, it's all about me having time, and you know, I'm, you know, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I appreciate it, right? All right, Thank you nice. nation. Appreciate it. All right, Bye. have a great night. Right. Have a great night. Yeah. All right. Hey, we got are we checking on? Is it which one is it? Which one is it? It's Salvador. That glass. That glass. Get rid of that echo. Get rid of that echo. Get rid of that echo. Salvador. Yeah, okay, we still got an echo going. Sal. Yep, Sal.
Salvador. Man. Oh, that's it. I thought that was okay. Hey, JT. JT, JT, can, can you hear me? JT? Hello? Okay. Let's, JT, you got you got too much going on around you and it's feeding into your into your mic. Okay. Guys remember when you when you call and you gotta cut your speaker or else you get a feedback. All right. Hey Salvador. Bravo, my bad. I watch it I watch it on two phones. Okay. I was I was <laughs> yeah, like yeah, well, delayed. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll kill each other like that. <laughs> Sal, good to hear from you though. Yeah. I've not talked to you in forever. What have you been doing, yeah, man? Man, just chilling, working. Um, man, Rumble, there's so much 49er coverage nowadays. You know, it, it's kind of hard to get in, and because stuff changes day to day, dude. And and, and um, things that, know, that, that have to nothing to do with football. Have you noticed that? I got a baseball player, the Giants, a player getting slapped. Because of something he did in fantasy. I, you got Javon Kinlaw and Grant. They got this thing going on over here. And then you got, you know, yep. and then you finally get the, you know, you got Debo attending Warrior games. And, and he should be at practice. You know, <laughs> you know what? It, it's he, like. When, he, did, he did the next day. You know, this he is just flies not in a, and flies out the next day. Yeah. This is just not a pure <laughs> beginning of the season that we're, can make you feel confident going into the season, right? Because it doesn't seem like everybody's focused. It's crazy. Well, I mean, the, the team team is ready. There's yeah. just really um, the, the negative cloud, you know, with the, the uh, you know, the contract situation, the gym situation. And, and then there's that. Um, yeah. You know, thankfully, thankfully, Bosa hasn't been in the conversation yet because I will, oh. like, lose my hair. I'll have a heart attack if God. that dude is not on our team. Because um, we we built we're building the defense around him, Rumble. You know, uh, you wanted to know what I'm thinking about. Um, you know, we doubled down on our strengths this year, obviously mm-hmm. with the pass rush. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited for that defense. <laughs> the, we have a uh, I don't know how we still have Chris Kasurik here. I think he's coming into his third year, uh, and that's gonna be a that's gonna be awesome. Demico Ryan's came back for his second year, so um, he man the second year calling plays. I am excited for um, the schemes, you know, the looks we're gonna give the offenses because mm. um, it's a it's a pass heavy, you know, NFL now, mm-hmm. and the teams that we're going against, they're they're gonna spread the ball, so mm. we're gonna have time to get that quarterback, and if we could just get to third down, um, Bosa, he is approaching his prime. Like that, those 15, 16, and 16 sacks last year, we took those for granted. That was an amazing season. He's one a week, two a week, yeah. whatever down in. Yeah. Dude, my guy came off of ACL and, oh, and sturdy, started every game. Double teams gonna, from him getting held like better, crazy. Now. Yeah, but you know what? He, Honestly, he, learned, he, it, he learned from that experience over the year before. They were they were chipping him and doing time, but he's learned some things how to handle that. So this oh, year, yeah. I look for him to be even better. Oh uh, no, they they won't they won't do that this year because we have too many guys. I'm mm. um, too much help for him. You know, Drake Jackson, the freak, the athletic freak coming off the edge. Uh, that's going to be pretty awesome. Wait to see what he looks uh, like in the NFL. Uh, a mad, a mad, healthy Kinlaw Durambo. I'm healthy. I'm I'm happy for that. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you know he he was spinning facts. All that emotion. Obviously, I didn't like it. I watched it live, but know you know scary. that was raw emotion, and he was basically telling him like. I'm going to prove you wrong, and you know, I just we, we just need Kinlaw, you know, healthy in the rotation. He doesn't need to be the best pass rusher on the team, but you but know, just take those teams, stop yeah. the run. You know, that's what we need. Get six sacks. I'm happy with that, man. We have enough guys. To so get, you know, he's going to take sacks. double teams like the Buckner did too. That that's that's going to be a huge. Yeah, that's help. what we need. Huge. So we so we can unlock the blitzes. We can unlock the edges. Um, you know, other other guys can eat. And then uh, with the you know with the offense, um, Trey Lance, I'm excited. Uh, mm. It's it's really hard, uh, you know, kind of, you know, with Jimmy G still on the team because you know there's still that question. I wish we already got that compensation <laughs> and whatnot, yeah. got that money. But it's it's the Trey Lance, you know, full go, Rombo. You know, he's making public appearances. Um, mm. 
you know, he he's just playing the role. That that dude's our guy. And yeah, and, and you know, it looks like he has support he, from the guys. But you, you don't want that distraction anyway. I mean, we don't have a backup quarterback, but you do want Trey not to be looking over his shoulder because Jimmy being in camp is really not good for his psyche. You know, you just, just – this, and Jimmy doesn't want to be there anyway. So get, let's, let's, let's get that done. Yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate. But I think – I mean, I, I would go with Nate Sosso as a backup quarterback. He you think there, so? He's been here since the second, you know. But, I mean, he doesn't um, – yeah, I don't, so know. Nothing. I don't know. How does it come down to having better, him play? After yeah, seeing him play, and, I haven't and, really seen him play. You got, you got I was just thinking about just like the chemistry. And yeah, like the, it, well, maybe, he helps him. You, you got to see the well, with, well, he, with financial things, not football. You got to see him play when he was with the Eagles. Oh, yeah. I said, you know, why is the, and then I found out the coach that we have <laughs> brought him over to the 49ers. <sighs> but what did he do before the Eagles? I think he was a good like prospect coming out of uh, college. Was I think he? he played in the Big Ten. But even that Eagles, everybody just remembers him for like being thrown into that tank game, which is unfortunate. <laughs> you know, and 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 what's the hurts sitting on the sideline wondering? I don't know how he played with the Eagles. I thought I remember him doing is going in for that tank game. Oh well, yeah, and well, Hurts was standing there, and they took him out for reasons unknown. But Sud fell in, and Sud fell going in looking awful, and. Hertz was sitting on the yeah. sideline. The camera kept zooming in on him. It was funny. <laughs> I said, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get too. Uh, so, you know. Uh, Brombo, um, one, one more thing. I just want to touch on, like, kind of like on the offense. Um, you know, Brandon and I, you, what do you think about him? From what, what I you, seen what last year, I, you came, he came into his own. That thing he did to what's his name in the Cowboy game, and Jimmy missed him. Oh man, that was one of the yeah. best route ankle breaking routes I've ever seen. Woo! My God, yeah, he's, the a, he's a nasty route runner. Damn. So yeah, I'm looking forward that, to this. That man's nasty, and that can we're going to see a lot of that because obviously you will probably already see the Lance connection with him. You know, so yeah, if he's together. getting the ball, if he's getting the targets, he's going to get that showtime. You know, to throw out those crazy ass routes and break some guys' ankles. You know, uh, they're going to be looking at him and like as a breakout mm. breakout candidate next year. They're gonna be feeling like, wow, well, where was this guy? Or, or man, special. man, look at the look at the jump he made, just like Debo in year three. But I use man, that guy has different mental. Yeah, he's, honestly, he's got the actually. When you look at his, Debo. he's got. I think he, he can run better routes and more footwork than Debo. But Debo is still the hammer. I mean, you, Debo's only gonna Debo's run out a, a few yards. Just drop the ball off to him and let him take it from there. Star on and off the field. Dude. Yeah, Rumble, he's the superstar on and off the field. He uh, he's thinking about way past uh, football right now. I wish he's he already would. in that state. Where, like, he's, know, yeah, Debo. He's, uh, you talking about Debo? Uh, yeah, he's yeah, a Debo he's was a superstar. A, he's worrying me though. I wish that's he, how he looks at himself. I, and I'm worried. So. About, are you worried about his mind and where it's at though? I want Debo. Last year he came in to the the year knowing he was going to dominate. He knew he was going to kick butt. Right now this year, I'm not sure what he's thinking about. Kind of worries me. It's kind of already been like this though since his rookie year, since his second year, he was already kind of flashy. Well, and, yeah, he um, was good, but he that. was like, yeah. when he when he had that best year, it's just like really like everybody like you know hyped him up and rightfully so, and everybody around him is put, putting him up to be you know the best in the league. Obviously, um, nobody does what yeah, he does. I mean, the guy can he can he just, the ball just, on and off the field. Yeah, he's Debo can do anything. Can't change him. Yeah. So I don't know. We, we need to like get him on our team for as long as we can. We're as, you know, as, as yeah, just as fast and as long as we can because obviously he has a future outside of football, outside of the 49ers, and he already he probably already told told the team he doesn't want to be here. Um, you think you think but, so? Nah. Debo's serious about the know. money. I think he's serious about the money. He is uh, overly serious. I think about he's the also money. serious about not playing with. I think he's serious about playing closer to home. Well, yeah, but why all of a sudden would you want to do that? I mean, if you wanted to play closer to home. He's just trying to capitalize because, dude, he had the best season like in the four, almost 49ers history, Rumble. He probably can't replicate that. Well, and he's, you know, obviously there's like agents trying to capitalize on it. Yeah, true, but, you know, I, if, you're gonna, if you did well with San Francisco, why would you want to leave? The system is designed for you. 
I don't know. We'll, mm. we'll find out. I guess the, you, yeah. you can play Debo football anywhere, I guess. I don't know. But I, I think, still think. Well, yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody's going to try to use him like that. But then I guess one of, I don't, I can't rem- really remember now, but one, one of the stories was he doesn't want to be used like a running back or white back no more. I see. I don't, I don't know understand. which one it is. Well, I think he meant by that, if you're going to use me like that, I need to be compensated for it. I, I don't. If he goes a whole game and okay, they don't give him a ball anymore, him like that I no thought he liked that. He didn't act like he didn't like it. He did. He did. He was he, he's badass. Rumble, you can't stop him. But I don't think you don't, we don't have to use him like that anymore. I think oh, that's no, what that, they were trying to tell him. That's the plan was not to, you know. But I didn't – that he voiced you know? anger about it. Was I was shocked by that. I didn't – well, not really. Everything's him. everything. Like what we're talking about right now is all rumors. Really much rumors because I don't really think he said anything about it. Are you? I really, really don't either. I, on, yeah. on social, he's just media's. acting up on social media like this, this disrespecting, like you know, not disrespecting, but like uh, just saying anything well, and everything to get attention. Just, yeah, it's kind of just like this, this in the media, this in the fans. So I don't know what. I really just wish he was just there at practice and you know at least speaking and saying his life. Yeah, it's kind of weird that he's staying away. Well, he'll be in San Francisco Friday. It's going to be we... real weird when he comes back. No, well, he'll be here this weekend watching the Warrior game. <laughs> Debo's made it a point. <laughs> Him and Draymond, you know. They, they make it a point to be seen during the course of the game, right? God, Debo. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you might as well work well, out while you're here. They got to tell him, get your ass to camp. They got to tell him, get your ass to camp. Go <laughs> so, put on the color. You put on red and gold. I'm trying to see him in red and gold again. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go, man. I tell you sure what, I'll, I'll look for you tomorrow if you got some time, huh? Good to hear from All right, you. I'll try I've to hear from you a little. Long long time. Yeah. But you've been busy. I understand that. I'll be looking for you though. All right, fam. For sure. You have a good Thanks, night. Go to you too. Hey, Thanks. hey, you too, Rumble. Tell everybody, all the East Coast callers, everybody that calls in, tell it's us. It's the empire. You gotta spread the word that we're an empire. I yep. know, right? Empire. I, I get yeah. tired of correcting we people. Destroy nations, so just, we take over kingdoms. Yes. You know, we lay them all to dust. This is an <laughs> empire. Empire never dies. Yes. The sun will never set on an empire. Good night. It is. All right, Sal. Great to hear from you. Talk to you later. And with that said, you know, it's time to start. Have you been barbecuing already? Actually, you can wait till tomorrow. Barbecue, actually. You know, might as well. Bam, I will see you tomorrow, though. And, uh, yeah, have a great night. And thanks. Thanks. And subscribe, you know, and, and them likes. What do we got? 187 people before. Boy, we got a lot of Rams fans in here bothering me. Boy, y'all know you ain't supposed to be populating this place like that. Ugh. Hit like, Rams fans. You know, if it wasn't for us, you guys wouldn't be so entertained because you want to be like us, right? So we're here to take all your poo-poo. So while you're here, you better you, – it warrants a like. Otherwise, you wouldn't have your miserable fun. Let's go change in a few weeks anyway. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Night out! Oh, so you love your cardio good. Yeah. <laughs>